trying to get it set up to where the canvas is in the middle of the screen here. All right, there we go. All right, thank y'all for joining me tonight. Tonight's going to be uh, a little different kind of night. We are going to have a guest on. Uh, his name is Mick Harper. And Mick has a channel called uh, Oils with Mick. Hey, Bobby. And uh, I'm actually going to be painting on a 16 by 20 canvas. And... Mick may be painting on a smaller canvas. We don't know exactly what size yet, but uh, he did say something about a eight by 10. And our intentions are to show people that that you can do this on a, well, there's Mick now. Sent a request and I did not get it. I did not get a request, Nick. Well, hang on. I may have. I just may be looking at the wrong thing. Since I'm live with my phone. Let me... I hate using this phone for live. Nope, I don't have it, Nick. I gotta get my camera set back up. Check the little people thing. All right. The little people thing. Sent again. Check the little people thing. <laughs> okay. What is the little people? Why can't it just show? All right, Tim. Thank you, man. Oh, okay. Hang on just a minute. I know why. Okay. Okay, hang on. Hey. You should, uh... Okay, so one, I thought we were going at seven my time. No. Wait, seven what... your time would be five o'clock my time. Are you there? Yep, sorry, sorry I'm here. Um, my bad, I misread things. So I thought you were going seven. Yeah, my bad. I thought I was going seven my time. Okay, for some reason, I'm not even seeing you. Okay, so I'm a little square right now. So you have to kind of touch on the, the same little people multi-guest tool, and you have to change the grid. Change the grid. Uh-huh. And I do not even see a grid. Okay, yeah. Um, there, okay, that's changing yours. That's the front and back camera. But, okay, I'm going to turn on my camera so we can do that. Hang on. Okay. So, hi, I'm here. <laughs> but now what I think you have to do is go into your little multi-guest or go into your settings 
and you just change the grid. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, this don't even make sense. Okay, well, I got an idea. Why don't you go off live, I will go live, and then you send a request to join mine. And how you do that is when you join my live as just, you know, well, a viewer, you'll see the little, like, people symbol or whatever, and it, you click on that. Oh, wait. Okay, so you're getting close. You're changing the grid. Uh, change the grid. Yep. So right now you're in, like, for more people, you need to make it to the dual or duet. 50-50 share. Uh -huh. and, and I guess it's in the... How would I do people, that? People are saying it's in the settings. I, I'm not sure. However, you just changed it. If you look at your screen now, you'll see it's different. This is crazy. Okay, now we're back to normal. Um, Golly. <laughs> oh, this is about some frustrating. We did it that one time. Yeah, we did it that one time, didn't we? Yeah. We did one time. All right, let me go back into settings. Yep. All right, I'm in grid. There, perfect. Don't touch a thing. Just turn on your camera. Turn on. What yeah, you're getting turned off right now. Whoa, how the crap I turn yep. it back on? Uh, so like that. There you go. There you go. Now, now, there, perfect. All right, we made it here. Okay. Yeah. Let me let me get mine set up too. My bad. I was. Well, I tell you what. While you're setting up, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put liquid white on my canvas and show people how yep. I do that anyway. Because yep. a lot of people have been asking. That'd be fine. I'm going to do a, by the way, I'm not doing an 8 by 10. I'm doing a 11 by 14. That's today. fine. Yeah, just as an FYI. You get the, the chance to see that you can do it on a different size canvas. That's, that's kind of the purpose of doing yeah. this. So. Right, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go this way. That way I can see what people are talking about. Uh, everybody that's here, I am so my, sorry this is taking so long. But we're about to get it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, buddy. Well, I appreciate that bird woman, but I understand it's kind of annoying to sit there and watch somebody move a camera back and forth. <laughs> but thank you. Well, I always say we're here. not professionals, so. Well, I am. I'm a professional. Right. A professional professional. <laughs> like, right, turn that just a little bit. This way. You're okay. We should be perfect right there. Should be, I think. I think. Nope. <laughs> oh my God. I'll be glad when I get to 10,000. Okay, I'll, uh. <laughs> and thank you guys for the likes and hi and hello, everybody. Uh, me and Harold are going to paint for Tennessee painting. Uh, he's got a bigger canvas. I'm here to kind of show, oh, he's going horizontal, so I best do that. Um, he's going portrait style. Um, but I'm here to yeah, show you I'll that, you don't, yeah, uh, you don't necessarily uh, need a huge canvas to do what we're going to do. So he's going to lead the way. All right, first thing I'm going to do. And I'm just going to follow. I'm going to show you all how to do the liquid white because I've had 
I've had several people ask me how I do my liquid white. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, I'm not going to tell you this is the proper way or the only way, but it's my way. And what I do is I take a two-inch brush. Now, I use a two-inch brush. It's kind of whooped up. It's a... Uh, Hey, Crimson. Then I dip right into my liquid white. Now let me try to show you here on the brush about how much I got on there. That's about it. It's, it's not just covered in it. Then I come up and I touch me some dots on my canvas. Just from top to bottom. That's all I'm doing is just touching it right on. Now, one thing to remember is when you're applying liquid white, you want to use some pressure because this canvas has little little teeth in it. And every one of those little teeth have air in them. So if you don't press this liquid white down into the canvas, it'll develop air bubbles. And over time, that can cause you problems. But I just take my brush and I try to keep it in constant contact with the canvas. And I'm pressing down until I make it all the way across. Then I come back and I do the same thing again. Right under it. Try to keep constant contact with the canvas until I go all the way across. And then again. Hey, hey, do that all the way down. Doing, okay. All the way down. It's the same thing I'm going to do. This time I'm just going to come back this way. For those of you who are just joining, I'm uh, following Harold's lead, but just on a smaller canvas. So He's I'm the teacher today. Oh, Lord, I didn't want to be the teacher. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you why I like to keep constant contact with my brush. And this is one of those steps where you don't have to do that to make this work. But I'm going to show you why I like doing it. And it's because... If you come up here and you just go to slinging it like that, liquid white's going to be over there on whatever's over there, and it's going to be on whatever's over here, over here. <laughs> uh, if you don't believe it, you can look at my laptop. <laughs> because I have, I have forgot in the past and got in a hurry and sling liquid white everywhere. Now, once I apply it, what's like up, this, Santiago? I get it to this point right here. I take me a paper towel. Now I use a I use a little bit inexpensive paper towel, but they're pretty decent. I mean they're not a they're just inexpensive. I wouldn't call them cheap. And then I come up to my canvas and I roll across just like so, all the way all the way across and all the way down. I don't want to come up here with a scrubbing motion because I don't want to tear my paper towel and get the little the little naps all over it. Or you can lay your paper towel up here and you can take your brush and you take that you know, all over. That's entirely up to you, whichever way you want to do it. But now I come back up and I just lightly remove all those paper towel marks just like that. And that canvas is perfect. That canvas is ready to paint on. I don't have to go up there and touch it. I don't have to do nothing. I already know it's perfect because I've done so many. But if you don't trust yourself, go up and touch it in five different places with five different fingers. Pull your fingers off and look at them. And it'll look just like if you went downtown with the police and had your frame press done. You don't want it to be too blotchy, too wet. You don't want it to be too dry. You want to see the perfect fingerprint, just like that. That's what you want to see. All right. Now. I'm adding a little bit extra because Arizona's stupid dry and uh, this canvas loves to absorb all of it. So while you were talking, Harold, I did do the fingerprints and I showed them what it should look like. Uh, but I add just a little bit more and 
depending on the humidity and dryness of your area, you know. Yeah, it will it will dry on you a little quicker. And it yeah. also, uh, if you're using a canvas board, which I don't recommend because it, it just sucks up liquid white. With that yeah. cardboard in it, it will suck it up. But now that's not to say that there's not another medium out there that you can't use. So, you know, look into that. You might be able to get away with some other kind of medium. I can't mention the name of anything because I'm a Bob Ross instructor, but, you know, I do know that there's something out there. I just won't call the name. <laughs> uh, now, Mick's got his covered. And he's using a 11 by 14, you said, Mick? Say it again? You using an 11 by 14? Yes, I'm using an 11 by 14, correct. And I'm using a 16 by 20. And the colors I have out are titanium white, thalo blue, blizzard crimson, my mix. I put out some black, some dark sienna, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow and bright red. Don't really know if all these colors get used or not, but I just put them out because you never know. Okay, let's go back for me because I, I didn't prep my. So we have blue, alizarin okay. crimson. I got thalo blue. I was going to do Prussian, but I got thalo. Okay, thalo blue, alizarin crimson. You have thalo green. No, I got sap green. Oh. Let me okay. just let me start over. I got. Titanium white, thalo blue, lizard crimson, the mountain mix. Then I got our black, dark sienna, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and then evil bright red. Okay. I'll be able to follow. Good deal. All right, I think, personally, we'll just keep it kind of simple. We'll do a, just a sky, mountain, trees, and, and lake kind of thing. Okay. Nothing real, nothing real out there. Well, thank you, Purs. I appreciate that. Mick, can you see the comments I see? Uh, I see that someone said, I'm so excited, and someone got number one gifter badge, and that we're at 10,000 likes. Who got a gifter badge? Number one gifter badge. So, yeah. Who I see some of what badge? you're saying. Well, I don't know who got it, but hey, thank you very much. Huh. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. All right. I'm going to take my two-inch brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is come right up and tap. Now I already got my colors pulled out. And I'm going to tap right into Thalo Blue. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to tap this color right in the brush. And that way it'll put an even distribution of color in the bristles. Okay, I'm going to come right behind, but instead of a two inch brush, I'll use a one inch. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're here tonight, by the way. <laughs> My wife may come in. I don't know if she was, oh, I don't even know what she was doing. She was doing something when I left. I think she was getting ready to, to do something with the dogs. I don't know. All right. I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to start my corners like I always do and just come across the top. Always on the corners, just a little darker. We'll leave a few light spots and dark spots up here. So we can, we can kind of control our sky however we want to. Now it goes to picking up that liquid white, and on the way down, it'll get lighter and lighter toward the horizon. 
if you've ever painted with me or watched any of my YouTube videos, you'll see I you'll know by now how I do my skies. So and then I lightly come back and brush out little brush strokes, just like so. And then tonight's gonna be one of the nights. My color's not gonna show up. So let me hit this light here. Turn it down one. All right. That's right. Don't forget to tap the screen. Especially later when we go to tap our fan brushes onto the canvas, tap that screen. Okay, for some reason my color looks like like it's got green in it. it yeah, I green. noticed that. It does not. It's stay low blue. Straight stay low blue. And why my stay low blue don't look like mix, I could not tell you. <laughs> well, I've got more yellow lighting and not studio lighting. Also, my window right now, it's around uh, close to sunset. I'm on the west, oh, okay. so I get a bunch of light. Gotcha. All right, we tap the brush again, same color. And whether you believe it or not, it is stay low blue. That's all it is. <laughs> get these people right, adjusted. Down here. I'm just going to start at the bottom. You doing a little water? Yep. All right. Just doing the water. Just pulling the blue so, in from the sides. That's all I'm doing. So again, in, instead of using that big old brush, I'm using because it's Yep. And I'm just using the big brush because it's faster. And I'm using the same brush because it's got the same color in it. And there was no sense in washing it, so. Like that, we have a sky and water. That's all right. Easy cheesy. I think I got this, bro. <laughs> Sounds good. Apologize that I was a little tardy there. I, I got our time zones all mixed up. Oh, right. You don't have to talk, guys. I was, I was all behind myself. All right. I'm almost scared to come up here and put clouds in my sky. I don't know that y'all even see. I'll just turn all the light off. Are you going to use a fan brush for the clouds? Oh, I know exactly what's wrong. Oh, I forgot to. My phone's got a setting for 480 and 720. And I should have put it on 720. Oh. oh, man. That's all right. We'll push through. I'm making get my wife to come down here and do it for me in a minute. Because if I reach back here and try to do it right now, I'm going to have it all down in the garbage can and everywhere else. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna use a fan brush for my clouds. Okay. This is number six. And the clouds I'm gonna do are, are some of probably the most simple clouds you can do as a painter. I, mean, really I can't think of an easier way to do clouds. And that's just bring the fan brush up, pull out a little of the paint, bring it down here and just load the brush up. And if there's an easier way of doing it, I hope somebody will show me one day because this is the easy way i found so far. But I just take that brush and I just come in here and I'm going to just smash it in 
and just flop it around. Just like just like a fish out of the water. Just that's all we do, just flopping that brush around. And try to keep the white at the top. I like so. That's I mean I can't think of an easier way to do clouds than that. Me either. And like I said, if there is an easier way, somebody please share that because this is the easiest way I've ever found. I mean, it's like I don't care method, you know. You just move the brush. You just keep it moving. That's that's the whole key. You just keep the brush moving. And as long as you do that, you got a cloud. Which y'all can't see this cloud. It's washed out. It's, uh, so, I don't got enough clouds going here for everybody. I can share our clouds. <laughs> and then that same two inch brush that I was using earlier. I'm just guys, thank you so much for the out. likes. Yeah, I'm glad you popped in to say hello. All right, so we're using the same corner of the brush to fluff the clouds. Is that what you said? I'm just using the same two inch brush that I gotcha. used, used in the sky earlier. I think yep. you used one inch. Yep. I'm just going to come up to the bottom. And I just want to lightly blend out the bottom on both clouds. It's just lightly blend to stay out the top. Just the bottom. Just like so. Then I'm going to come up. Just real lightly, real lightly, fluff it up, both of them, and then real lightly brush across. And for those of you at home, you can see my brush where the blue is, the dark blue, and how gently I touch with just a couple hairs to just kind of pick up just a little bit of that white. Again, we're like Harold said, we don't want to touch the edges. We don't want to disturb those, but we're just gently. You almost miss the canvas when you come across it. That's right. I mean, you just, you, you're all missing the canvas. And the instance that brush just runs across, it moves that paint just a tad. That's when you know you got where you want. Went ahead and wash my two-inch brush real quick. John Meyer, nine twenty-two. Well, wouldn't that be great if that was the John Meyer? <laughs> well, thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that. Harold, what is, what is the most challenging uh, painting you've done to date? Ooh, the most challenging? Mm. I think my first uh, my first pet portrait was the most challenging. Gotcha. Now, my most challenging Bob Ross painting that I've done so far is uh, Royal Majesty. That's a pretty Which good one? Painting. Royal Majesty by Bob Ross. Oh, yeah. It's uh, yep. pretty tough, too. Okay. All right. We got any questions at this point? We got a sky, we got water, we got clouds. Anybody got any questions? Bobby said he loves this duet so far. All right. That's awesome. You're doing great as an instructor, so keep it up. Bobby is, a, Bobby is an awesome painter. I'm telling you. And we appreciate the tips, the viewers that are here, and uh, feel free if, if any of my friends are in here and hasn't followed Harold, go ahead and follow Thank that guy. Thank you very much.
And the same with me. You know, if y'all don't follow him, Mick's got a channel. So, <laughs> so because I don't have Mountain Mix uh, on the ready, um, is that where we're going next? Yeah, the mountain. Okay, I'm going to mix up some of my Mountain Mix. Okay. So what I do uh, yeah, for I mean, I Mountain Mix this. is Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, uh, Touch of Black, and a little bit of brown. So blue, red, brown, black, that essentially will get you a Mountain Mix-like paint. Yep. Blue, red, brown, and black. Okay. All right, I'll be ready to do the mountains when you are. Bobby said, have I ever, have you ever tried a painting without liquid white? <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah. It's, it's not something I'm going to do again. I, I will actually say I've done some amazing uh, paintings on a black canvas and never used a single white tone. Oh, I think he meant like no mediums at all, just a dry canvas. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Just a black canvas. And I used a uh, and crimson base and then built off of that and used no magic white or liquid white base. Well, I always use liquid clear to be in it. Oh, no, you don't even necessarily have to. All right. Same, so same, but same concept, but just one shiny in the end and one's duller. <laughs> All right, Harold, are we doing big mountain ranges? What are we doing? Mountain mix on my brush. Oh, boy. I'm just going to come up here with a little, just a little simple range today. It ain't, ain't got to be nothing new spectacular today just just as long as it looks like a mountain that's all we're going to care about today make sure you always get you an outline that's your most important part a good clean outline what's going on down in here we don't even care about right now that's not even important you just come over here and put us in a little peak just run that right on off the canvas. Now you guys will notice our mountain ranges are going to be kind of different, but I'm going to try to follow his idea. Mine might be a little bigger, or his might be, who knows, but we're both just kind of making this up as we go along, so we're having fun. Right? That's it. That's what it's all about, having fun. Uh, PERS, it does matter uh, if you are, if you're using liquid white, your colors, when they, when they hit the canvas, they will mix with the liquid white. And most of the time, it'll tone the color down a little bit. Liquid clear won't change your color at all. And liquid clear, you use such a small amount of it. I mean, a very, very, very small amount of it. Um, you have to make sure that your brushes are thinner with it. Because thinner and uh, liquid clear have a violent reaction. Now, on a, on a uh, black canvas, I prefer liquid clear because it's transparent. If you come up there with liquid white, well, you just turned your whole canvas white. So, hey, Warren, how you doing? It's a uh, mountain time. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's about mountain time. You know that old uh, saying? It's about Miller time or whatever. 
It's almost mountain time. Uh, all I'm doing now is coming up here and I am scraping and I am scraping with a glacier. And that is by far one of my best sounds, which I love that sound. That's one of my favorite sounds in the world. Scraping that. I'll just sit here and do this for the next 20 minutes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, I do love that sound. Okay, I'll quit. And I know folks at home, by the way, Harold has a lot of paint sitting out. Um, one, he has a bigger canvas, but also for demonstration purposes. I wanna let you guys know, I'm doing this small canvas, and as you can see, I have about a dime size, maybe a nickel size portion out for my painting. So you're not using a lot of paint, by the way. It just looks like it when we smear it. <laughs> now, another reason that I leave mine, when I that tomorrow I'm painting again, so, most of these colors get used tomorrow again anyway. Yep, and that makes sense. And luckily, uh, the room I'm in is air conditioned. So unless I'm using a lot of paints, like the earth tone colors, the whites, the blues, the lizard and crimson, the mountain mix, black, green, all of this color, as long as it's not a brown earth tone, it, it'll feel like tomorrow just like it does tonight. I won't have any problem with it at all. Right. All right. Warren said he tried a mountain about a week ago, turned into a new prime canvas. <laughs> Warren, you're not the first one that's happened to, man, so don't, don't get discouraged. Uh, mountains are, I mean, they're not, they're not the easiest thing to paint, but it requires practice. I mean, then you, you gotta you gotta practice, and the more you do, the, the course the better you'll get. I know you that sounds cliche, but it's the truth. And I'm not trying to take an easy way out by giving you that that information, but practice. Basically, practice. basically the only thing you want to do, the best thing I can tell you to remember is. When you come up here and you get your outside line, try to stay out of it when you come back up to do these next few steps. And then when you go to put your highlight color on, use as little amount of pressure as you can get away with. And practice that least amount of pressure. That's that's key to getting your mountains to do what you want with that highlight. Especially if you use a highlight. I don't know if you're watching my YouTube channel or not, but I've got several videos there, and then I've got a couple that you don't even use a knife to make your mountains that you can you can use a brush. So check out my YouTube channel if you're not already. I will also, you know, shameless plug, I have a YouTube channel and an Instagram all under oils with Mick. So you guys can find me there. I will wholeheartedly admit that my YouTube channel is basically a rebroadcast of my TikToks. <laughs> There's nothing special with now my, my YouTube. Energy. Shameless plug for my YouTube is it's a uh, it's basically how-to step-by-step tutorials. Yes, sir. And I got like 50 days to come up with 150 guests. I mean, uh, subscribers. So. Y'all get please, to following him. Please get that thing. <laughs> That's I'm right. Dead. I'm worried to death I'm not going to make a thousand before my date. All right. All I'm doing so now is taking this two inch brush. I'm pulling this color down and out. See how I'm doing that, Warren? Coming right up to that edge. Trying my best not to get outside of it. Because if you do, your mountain's going to grow. There's no, there's no way around that. Your mountain's gonna grow. But bring that brush right out to the edge and just get as close to it as you can without going outside of it. 
and pull that paint down and out. And just keep in mind, so, angles are the most important thing when you're doing mountains. you got to have angles. So just come back to that oh. edge, pull that paint right out. That's all you got to do. I will apologize. I got a like instinctual for me. As soon oh, as I fine. do my mountains, I grab the brush and scrub away. <laughs> I mean, it ain't like you don't know what you're already doing. So, right. But for those people that have trouble with it, I try to, I try to take my time, and that probably gets on a lot of people's nerves. But I, I talk a lot during my paintings because it's stuff by step mainly, and the teacher just okay. takes over in me and. No, one thing that I've thoroughly enjoyed about watching you, Harold, is, yeah, you are definitely a step-by-step -step instructional painter. And um, not only that, you're a very humble guy, um, which I appreciate. You're humble, happy, and, boy, you just like teaching. So I appreciate that. Well, I do enjoy it. Well, thank you, Purge. Melissa, well, I am so glad this is your downtime. Decompression therapy. I like that. <laughs> if it helps you decompress, it makes me feel good inside. That's all I can say. Amen. God bless to that. I have a person who, you know, doesn't always have the happiest of days. I find painting and supporting my friends who are artists, that makes me smile. Y'all see what she said right there, don't you? She bought her first hair painting earlier this week. Oh, that's awesome. Little does she know that painting will be leaving out tomorrow and her way. Very it is 100% dry. It is already sitting there with in the box. And there's a couple little things I got to add in there with it. And it'll be headed your way. Yeah, it, it, uh, it was a beautiful painting. She got the Northern Lights painting. And uh, I thought when I put it on the Etsy store, it was going to be dry enough, but I used a lot of white in the trees and a lot of uh -huh. white in the mountain. And white is the slowest paint there is to dry. And it was just a little yeah. bit tacky the uh, day before yesterday. And I thought for sure... It'd be dry yesterday, but it was just a little bit gummy. And then today it was, you can touch it and not get paint on you and not move the paint. So it's ready. It's ready to go. That's and awesome. sitting there all day today with air blowing on it until we got it boxed up a little earlier. And tomorrow, UPS will have it and they'll be headed your way with it. Well, thank you, Bobby. You're always selling yourself short. As, as good as you are, man. You, I'm telling you. Right. You are. You are awesome. So, Harold, Harold, are we moving on to doing um, snow caps? No. Nope. Yep. Very good. Well, you don't have to. I mean, you put whatever you want to as highlights on yours. Oh, I know. I'm just following the. Uh, I'm going. The I'm going to use. I'm going to use white. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> One thing I will say, um, by the way, and this is maybe helpful to the new artists and also maybe even Harold as a reminder or whatever, you have to find your perfect knife. Maybe, obviously, Harold, he um, uses, you know, a certain brand of knife, and I'm not taking away from that. But if you're a left or right-handed person or how you hold things, you know, one that I always say you can pull back like a spring if you can do this you know you've got a nice palette knife um, I prefer the inner to be hook others like that flat ridge so they can you know hold it this way but it's all about this loosey-goosey touch 
I don't know if you guys noticed how I'm waving around my my palette knife. It's because I'm barely with two fingers holding it like so. And this really helps with the the feel of putting white on a mountain. So sorry to interrupt there, instructor, but feel free. Uh, that was a good tip, Nick Van, by the way. Uh, yeah. Right quick, like. Yeah. Bobby, uh, <laughs> why are you, of all people, sitting there saying what you said after that comment you made the other night about I should take her phone and use it? And now you're going to tell me to be on my best behavior? <laughs> That's right, wifey. He said that. He said I should take your phone and use it to broadcast on YouTube at the same time. No, it wasn't Rod. Rod saw it. It was Bobby that said it. I agree with that. That might help you and work. But, um, yeah. You ready to do some snow caps? Yep. <laughs> okay. Lead right, the way, Mister well, Jedi. Some white, just pulling it, pulling it out as flat as I can get it with my knife. That is very crucial. That it be as flat as you can get it. <laughs> oh, that's right, Rod. Get her butt. <laughs> Oh, oh God! Let me, all right, y'all gotta stop. I gotta move his mouth. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna come right up here with my little roll of white, and I'm gonna come right up to my peak, and I'm gonna just barely touch it. And you can feel that you can feel that paint when it touches that canvas. You can feel it, and then just very lightly, very lightly, just pull it down. That's all you do. And just let that paint break. It's just that easy. And as a reminder, in between each swipes, clean your knife. Uh, can you sneak down here without the dogs? I need you to make a make a change on my camera for me. All right, then we'll come back up. And I'll do the same thing again. And it's important that you let this paint break and leave these these dark spots. The dark spots are what gives you your your crevices and your cuts and, and it just I think I think that door is unlocked I mean if I could get up and go over to the door I could get up and work on the canvas I'm in the camera but I got everything just tight around me right now and if I get up I could knock the camera over uh, I want to so I will say, Harold, I did get a little bit ahead of you. Oh, you while, go ahead, man. Yeah, while you work out the details, I'll tell folks I got a little bit ahead because obviously uh, Harold and I both are very uh, proficient painters, and uh, we know what to do next uh, when you start talking mountain scene or, you know, things like that. So I got a bit ahead, but I will agree. I don't know if you guys can see it so much on Harold's, but however mine, if you look at this, break right here it comes in solid and then as i go down less and less paint is being exchanged so that mist that bob is always talking about and that separation line that is caused in mountains by starting strong and then letting the paint just go into the canvas and so you get those breaks those peaks those kind of things now you'll notice that my uh, light is coming from the right hand side. Harold, <clears throat> excuse me, Harold, what side is yours coming from? Right. The right. So yep. some people may my, find my it easier to go. Backwards. Okay. Some may find it easier to go to the right. 
Some might find it easier to go to, you know, have the highlights on this side. I, as a left-hander, I did try highlights to the left. Um, but because of the knife that I found, I was able to adjust for that. Uh, being a lefty in a right-hand world, boy, you have to adapt. Some but settings. Somewhere. Excuse us, guys. <laughs> have you got your phone? No. Oh, crap. So you know, they can hear you. Don't be saying bad words. Don't say a bad word. Crap ain't a bad word. That's be crap and right. Up here somewhere. Okay, y'all bear with me. Okay, thank you. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, oh boy. It's it's on 480p. It needs to be on 720. See how my colors are. Oh, yeah. I thought you was just doing a bad job. No, it's, <laughs> it's because I didn't set the stuff. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear that. I love her humor. <laughs> Wifey, you got a great sense of humor. Melissa, I like said, it. Melissa said to you, hi. Hey, Melissa. You know that? Yes. Thing we got boxed up over there. That's, that's that right. lady told you that I was always Don't right. Don't worry about that lady listen. telling me anyway, all that. I just, can't find settings. Okay, go get your phone and look up how to do it but I, before you turn me off here. Oh Lord! Go to, oh God! Have... You didn't turn me off. No, I didn't. No, no. She's... <laughs> oh, you guys okay, cut me off. Just look up on YouTube how to change the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about. No, I don't have a clue, but I'm gonna figure it out. It's 480p. Go I'm... on back to paint. Now ain't nobody wanting to hear you. Well, if you don't have cushion buttons, they ain't never seen anything. Okay. <laughs> Y'all carry on. I'm going to see if I can figure this out. All right. You ain't the only ones on country. Well, there we go. We have a uh, little uh, behind the scenes going on at, at Harold's there. And uh, I've added about pretty much most of my highlights on my mountain range. Harold's done about, oh, 50% of his. Um, but one thing I will point out, if you guys notice, we're not doing straight TP mountains. There's no up and down, you know, mountains, mountain, mountain. We're doing these sloped, jagged, you know, we have a, a ski spot right there. We've got a misted one over here. You've got a curve to the mountain. I do want you guys to pay attention to curve. You Okay, I'm done talking, Harold. I, I just thought I would take over why you were dealing with your technical stuff. Okay, hang on just a minute here. All right. Thank you, Purge, by the way. Yes, and Harold. thank you guys for being here. By the way, I'm Oils with Mick, and this is Painting with Harold. And uh, we're just trying to have fun together while painting on different sides of the canvases. Harold is the instructor. I'm following his lead, trying to show you guys that you don't need a huge canvas. You can do it on a small 11 by 14. Harold's got a 16 by 20. Um, but basically, we're just painting side by side, having fun as friends. And so welcome all you guys. I see there's 20 out of you in here. Harold's trying to adjust maybe his lighting or his camera so it doesn't look so aqua, aquamarine. But uh, I cannot anyway. I got all of it. I, I think can't believe you guys are saying all of this. I, you're all okay, bud. To the manly love here. All of you men are siding with her. What is up with this? <laughs> guys, that, you, well, you're nope. doing that kind of stuff. No, nope. no offense, <laughs> Harold, but I think we know who wears the pants, buddy. So we ain't going to argue well, with the boss. because I'm wearing shorts right now. <laughs> that's the only reason. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm mixing up a little white and a little blue. And I'm okay. going to get just a drop of my mountain color. Then we'll bring it into the white and blue. Kind of gray it yep. down just a tad. I'm doing the same. I add my mountain mixture with my titanium white. Just a little bit here. And one thing <laughs> maybe we haven't covered, but keeping things marbled with that marbled look. Okay. Rod, you're dismissed. 
All right, Giggles. I'm going to get ahead of you and do the uh, shading on my mountain. <laughs> you are dismissed, Rod. So I'm just going to come in here right to the top of my peak and then let, again, the paint exchange and pull from the canvas. Okay, I heard that, and you can't be mean to Rod no more. Rod said that I saw what Rod said, and you okay. can't be mean to well, him no I more. I wasn't mean. I just don't need to dismiss. I will. I said it nicely. Okay. I wasn't mean. I was just my way of being nice. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> I know better. It wasn't me. Just banging on the floor. It wasn't me. <laughs> Y'all know that song, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't me. I do have an evil twin out there. I do too. And she gets me in a lot of trouble and I don't do it. It's, uh, it, well, normally it's Harold getting me in trouble, but y'all can believe that. <laughs> well, you guys are just funny. You're a hoot. Oh, don't know, boy, you should have fixed this before you started. I know I should have, but I didn't like Laurel and Hardy of the world. Yeah, Harold, it's okay. We can march through, my friend. It's no problem. We've got uh, quite a good crowd here. They're here to see you paint, and you teach me how to paint. Right? What Daryl say? He said, "You're gonna need some Tylenol. <laughs> you are, because I'm gonna put <laughs> I'm gonna put pop nights on your head if you don't quit." Well. Okay. And no, that's not what Daryl said. And he said, thank you for working on it. How are you going to glide on that man like that? I don't know. What all of <laughs> Oh, fun. Did you see what Melissa said? Silence is golden. Did you see what I told Melissa? I'm all about the silver. I can duct tape. That's what she said. Silence is golden, but duct tape is silver. And I told her I was all about the silver. Okay, I can't do nothing with it. It's not letting me change those settings. Well, we just so you're yeah. gonna have to go with what you got. Um, guys, Unfortunately, please. yeah, Harold. I'm, that's what's gonna have to happen. Once you start the live, it's hard to change the uh, definition. So it's okay, but we'll march through. Mick, you're doing an amazing job over there. And for those of y'all who have not subscribed to his channel, please go do. And for those of y'all that have not went and checked out Paint Your Dream World, y'all go check him out. He does amazing work. And Rod, look, I'm sorry he's talking bad about you. I ain't painting. Y'all have fun. <laughs> not yet, honey. You will, though. Nope. It ain't happening. She is not going to paint. Never say never. Okay. I've tried, tried. She ain't painting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, whilst all that uh, technical stuff went on, basically, Harold is adding a darker tone, a shadow tone to his mountain. Um, I also added mine. As you can see, I'm more with shadow. It's kind of making an even Steven out of it, but that's okay. Everybody has their same old painting, and you make it your world, right? See it. And because I know well enough, and I know where we're going with this painting, I'm getting a wee bit ahead, and I'm making that mist. Because while the... Uh, Honey, honeymooners were uh, arguing and uh, fussing. I went ahead and painted. <laughs> now, I, I love uh, Harold and his wife, by the way. I'm not uh, talking against you guys. I want to, for the record, I'm just teasing you. Well, Purge, if you have any questions along the way, you feel free to ask. That's what we're here for. That's right. Yeah. We'll have... definitely do all we can to help. You have a Bob Ross instructor right, in, right next to me. Right here. Now, I will help anybody in here tonight except for Rob. 
Oh, Rod's on the, the, the poo list, huh? And I'm going to have to be real hard about this. Hey, Rod, come to me on the side. DM me, you know, follow. I got you, bro. Anyway. All right. So you let me know when we're ready to move uh, to the next bit there, Harold. Oh, I'm just going to take my two-inch brush and... Uh... <laughs> just tap out the bottom here tap up in the same direction that you're coming down with your highlights same direction and you don't want to destroy the bottom of this mine you just want to diffuse it just a little bit just enough to make that little bit of mist down here And then over here, we're going to come down the same direction that this paint comes back. Always try to remember that. Come, come up and down at the same angles. And avoid having a straight line across here. If you can, that, that just don't work. <coughs> Once you get done with your painting, if you've got a straight line of mist across there, it's going to tell you eyes and stuff. That your brain ain't gonna want to hear. So, yeah, I will say because of my because of my territory, I did not leave as much mist as Harold did. If you notice, I think Harold had about a half inch. I went to about a quarter inch, but I also took a brush and gently pulled that white down into the blue to create that and disturb that mist. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. All right. Now, I guess the next thing would be what type of what type of trees we want to do. Let's see here. Oh boy. We're just doing a little simple foot of your trees. All right, I'm gonna come right in here to my mount mix and to my black and grab a little of my sap green. Hold up, Harold, what you doing now? I'm I'm pulling down some uh, mound mix and a little black and a little sap green and I'm mixing it all right on the brush. So I made my own mountain mix. Um, let me add just a little more phthalo blue. Boop. So he are you are we going in for char uh, far away chopped trees yeah okay thank you Harold okay so I'm gonna take my blue little lizard and crimson touch of brown go into my ivory black again and we'll mix this up and then what other color did you add I made my mountain mix but what other color I got sap green in here Sap green. Okay. So I'm just, as you guys can tell, my little essentially dime sized portion, I'm just taking a tiny bit and adding that to the mountain mix. Okay. I think I'm ready for you, Harold. We're on to the next. Yo, hey, Casey. Thank you, Elizabeth. In your dream world, by the way, yes. Any of my people that are in this room right now, follow Paint Your Dream World. You'll be amazed. Acrylic artist. You will be amazed. Chef Kiss. Thank you, Kathy. All right, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to start... I'm going to start a little above my mountain. And I just want to come down. Oh, oh we're doing is. hills. We're doing footy hills? Oh, yeah, my so gosh. Foot hills. Oh, I, I didn't realize we were doing I thought we were going to do a row of trees. Okay. That's oh, fine. I get, 
It'll be trees when I get done. Yeah. No, I get you. I get you. I now. All right. I'm following you there, boss. Okay. So, footy. Do whatever you want to do. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just showing people at home that the same thing. We can follow each other and we can uh, create together and that uh, what you do is amazing and people like you have taught me along the ways. So why wouldn't we go step by step? All right. All I'm doing right now is coming back here, adding a little thickness under it. To give it a little body so it don't look like a real thin piece of land stretched out across there i want it to have some body to it just like so yeah purse he's using uh different brushes and you can do that you can use different brushes for the same oh yeah technique. I've done it's almost basically a, what you get used to. I mean, that's yeah. I've done almost a full painting with nothing but fan brushes. So you can do fan brushes, filberts, one inch, two inch, half inch. You can do all kinds of stuff. All right. Once I get this laid out in this position right here, the way I got it laid okay. out, I'm gonna taking lay my brush sideways flat like this and I just want to very lightly pull through and just lift right out and just flick that paint right up and that's going to give us the indication of thousands and thousands of little trees across here just like so and now let's see what because it I'm right using here. a hang on sorry Harold because I'm using a fan brush I am loading each time before I pull up because if you don't have enough desire as you would with a one inch or a two inch. So occasionally you have to reload the fan brush to give it that look. Just as the FYI. That's one. <laughs> also, do y'all notice what it did right here? I put these white spots in my in my little foot heel. That is an awesome thing right there. Because now you come back to the bottom and pull up through the entire little thing very lightly. Just like so. Just pull right up through there. And now those little white spots will have trees growing in them too. And it'll look like layers of of uh, trees out there now. You won't just have them up here. You'll have them in here as well. If you can see that up close, it'll look like there's little little dips in here with trees growing through them. Then you can take you a clean, dry two-inch brush. You can come right back up here. Now, when I do this, I'm going to be tapping, y'all. It's time to tap. Y'all got to gotta keep up. That's right. I got to double keep up tonight because both of us are going to be tapping, so that's twice the taps. So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap, and I'm going I'm to have a little down, downward pull in my brush when I tap down. It's, it's just a little slight downward pull. Just like so. See how it's pulling that paint out? That's as far down as I'm pulling that paint out. And by doing that, it's mixing with that blue and that so, so. Now you can do it slow until you get the right feel for it. But once you know the amount of pressure and all to use, you can come across here then and you know, once you get used to the amount of pressure you use, you can, you're going to always pick up speed. You can always pick up speed later as the more you practice. Don't worry about doing it at the same speed. I'm doing it at right now. You don't have to. So for those of you at home watching me, because I'm using a smaller brush and a fan brush, 
In order to get the same desired look, I am chopping up with my fan brush, deciding where my horizon line is, and then chopping down to, to kind of give that mirrored effect. And then I'm going to take a brush, pull down, and gently go across. Hey, Cam, how you doing? Alright, see how they gave us a layer of mist down at the bottom of them trees? <laughs> and how are you guys doing out there? And hello, hello, hi. <laughs> Thank you guys for the likes. Look at that. We're up to 20K, bro. Woo! Oh, really? That's amazing. Yeah. So. By the way, uh, guys, I want to tell you that I kind of lost some of Harold's mist because I have a smaller canvas. But what I'm doing with that dark color is I'm taking it into some liquid white, okay, and just pulling it in. And I can tap in and get that same idea of mist before I go and out appropriately. So two hairs and some air. We'll blend in some white, make some mist, and then we'll go to the next layer. Okay, Harold, where are we going next? All right, next, I'm coming right back into my mountain mix color. And I'm going to come right back into my black color. This time, instead of picking up sap green, I'm going to come over and get a little of the phthalo blue. Same colors as before, but this time adding thalo blue. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it a good bit darker than this shade of green that's already up here. And the reason I'm going to go darker now is I want to pull the color forward. We're moving forward in our landscape, so colors are going to get darker. But the thing of it is, you don't want to kill all this mist down here. But let me tell you this, using a darker color will also separate your colors. It won't create that tangent on you. So let me show you what I mean. When you come up here with a good bit darker color like that, see how it acts as your separator anyway? But what you want to do is you can still come down and you can come down under that mess down here and you can come back above it a little. And then you can come back down under it again. And that way it does let you know that there's still mist back here. And it will show distance that way too. But using using that dark of a color is is basically all you really need. Having the mist and the darker color at the same time, that's just like that's just like a guarantee that it's gonna show distance and depth. And then, all I'm doing now is just like I did up top, I'm coming across and I'm giving it some body. But this time I don't want it to fade out like it did up top. I want it to stay dark. So now, while Harold is explaining and done a great job of explaining his painting, I want to let you guys know that I went in the opposite direction. He went a light background and he's going darker as forward. I'm going to go with a dark uh, background and lighter as I work back. Um, also, what I'm going to do is, because I'm using fan brushes, I don't have the ability to make that mist as much as Harold, but I use that with by adding a little white. But essentially, I am going to work more green blue right now i'm a gray blue in the background i'm going to bring it a little slider on the green side you know what i mean yep. so just thought i would hop in there harold i know both of us are trying to instruct different paintings or no the same painting not different ones but uh i'm kind of seeing where he's going with the painting and i'm using my 
ability and skill and whatnot, and just having fun painting together with Harold. So there's that. Bobby said he's waiting on me to make an error. Okay. Well, my so picture's still not acting right tonight. All right, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to use the dark color on. And I'm going to come over here and grab a fan brush that I was using earlier now. Why are you waiting on me to make an error, Bobby? You know I don't need to make no errors. And besides, oh, good painters like that, we don't we don't make errors. And if we do, no one can tell because we adapt right over them. Okay. Well, I make. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> No, the catch is acting like I you. I made there when I first started. I put my camera on 480p and not 720. And my paints look washed out, so there you go. <laughs> Error number one. All right. What I'm doing now, I got this sitting here just waiting. This second little foot heel. And I went back and I pulled up the trees. Y'all saw me do that. I hadn't done nothing else yet. But now I got my fan brush. You're not answering me, Vincent. I don't know who Vincent is. Somebody fell off on that one. Oh, Lord. I didn't get it. Hmm. Who, is, who is Vincent? Bradster. Oh, Braxton, Vincent, Vincent is me. Vincent is me. That's a nickname I acquired from a very, very interesting Welshman. <laughs> well, if, uh, if you're Vincent, Braxton's trying to get your attention. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll look right into that. Bro. <laughs> I love you, Laura. <laughs> yeah. No, that. Yeah, he's amazing. Y'all are full of y'all selves this night. Yeah. I knew this was going to be a fun night. I knew it. I put that in the description. I said tonight will be a fun night. Amen. Y'all are not disappointed. All right. <laughs> I'm going to try to make some evergreen trees here. Y'all killing me. I want to tell you that. Bradster. I think it should be done more often. Thank you for the love, bro. Yeah, Bobby, we are using the same blue, but my camera settings are off. You remember the other night when I did that uh that painting that we put the freaking cactuses in finally? I went on YouTube, did some reading, and it said my camera was on the wrong uh Van Gogh. I got you, Braster. Uh, my camera was on the wrong setting. I had it on the lowest setting. And now it's back on that low setting. And that's why my colors look washed out again tonight. Like this color right here is actually way darker than it's showing on camera. And this color is almost black. So... Well, actually, my blue is the same color as Mitch's blue. It's just stay low blue. Yep. My camera said he got it looking like Caribbean, Caribbean water. Like uh, Michelle, uh, Melissa said earlier. Anyway, I'm going to make a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Less talking, more painting. <laughs> all right. All I'm doing right here is just putting in a couple little evergreens to... Uh, I'm going to do the little up trees tonight. And these are going to be kind of far off, so they don't have to have a lot of attention to detail back here. 
I just want you to be able to tell they are evergreens. Yep, that's what I kind of chopped in. I've got a background here with some water mist coming in. I've got darker trees and then some that I've added a little bit of green to. We'll add that later in the highlight because I think I know where Harold's going. I'll have to pop in and sneak in a few things myself, but we're right along. I got my water line going and my reflections. And I hope that if Harold does one big pine tree on one side, that would be amazing and really help my painting pop. Hint, hint. <laughs> but by the well, way, thank like, you guys for I the feel like well, this side is going to have a, a tall pine. Very good. Beautiful. And this side is going to have a, a deciduous tree that will come right under these clouds and down. Okay, I'll watch you do that uh, tree. What I think I'm going to do to kind of show people fun with trees, um, we essentially kind of have a close background, right? And we're doing similar painting. What I'm going to do is split the difference. I'm going to put a tree here with a little inlet here and a bank, and then I'll put one very close so that you see that the water works its way back to the mountain. Sounds good. But I'm going to wait for you to learn how to do trees because that's one of the things we want to do, um, kind of do in our live is teach people. And we thought we could do it together. Although I know where he's going with this painting, I'm going to wait until he teaches us the next step. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me go ahead and do this right quick then. I'm going to come back up here right quick and I'm going to get some of my dark color and I'm going to come right here under this and I'm going to start pulling this down across here and this is going to be my reflection into the water. It's got to come straight down. Just like so. Now I'm pulling this down a little further where the trees are up here on the bank. Just a tad, not much. And and Harold, the reason also I'm holding is because I know where we're gonna go. So I need to load my palette with enough paint to cover for our next steps. So, although I'm getting a little ahead of you, you know how it goes, right? All right, now as a waterline, guys, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to grab a little of my titanium white, and I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm not going to do the typical white waterline. I'm going to take some dark sienna, and we'll bring it up here, and a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to mix all these three colors together. That's white, yellow ochre, and dark sienna. And I'll leave them kind of marbled, but at this point it don't really matter. I want a little more white in that. Right, I'll leave it kind of marbled. Bye. All right, now I'm going Thank to you here. for the, the tips get a little bit of this paint on my knife and to do this water line I'm gonna start over here on the edge now I'm gonna have some trees come down through here so I don't have to come all the way out but I do know I need to be at least here so I'm just gonna lay this color flat and I just want to drag that knife across kind of in a chopping motion about like so and in some places I want it, I want it uh, skinnier. In some places I want it to come down a little further. Thank you, Moni. Just like so. And then in, in some places I want it real, a whole lot smaller. And I'm doing this, I'm doing this all the way across the canvas. 
And Harold, not to interrupt, and I know you're used to your style of teaching, I want to explain people on my small canvas, I essentially achieve the same thing by using a palette knife and a little bit of white and just scraping across. And then things I didn't like, I just kind of blend it out. So I still have that mist of that rocky water coming back here. And then now that you're at that point, I'm going to cut in myself a little more sharp and defined water line. Does that work for you, Harold? Yeah, whatever you want to do, bro. Hey, Mom, okay. how are you doing? Yeah, I, I just don't want to, like, interrupt, you know. Of course, I, I will say while you're talking, occasionally I'm going to say thank you for the roses, likes, follows, and shares, etc. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to get a little white. And I'll come up here and get just a little bit of my sapphire green. And I'm going to put in this white. And it will make me a very, very, very light green color with a fan brush, mind you. And then I'll pick up just a little bit of the blue and put in that color. And I want to just tap that fan brush straight down in and get those bristles spread apart. Okay? That's all I'm doing. I want my bristles spread apart. Then I'll come right up here to the top of that that line I just made. And I want to touch across here. Just in different places. And you don't have to touch everywhere the same height. You want it to be taller in some places and shorter in others. And just come across here and touch right on top of that on top of that line we just made. That's all I'm doing. Just touch right on top of that line that we just made. And what that'll do is it'll give us a little shore look back here. A little, little land under it. With like a little bush line growing back here. And it takes away from the eye seeing a straight line. Because the eye don't need to see a straight line in nature all the time. Very good. Then I'm gonna come I'm back glad you brought that up. <laughs> solid white. Then I'm gonna pick up just a tad bit of the blue this time. And this is just white and blue. There's only two colors here. Very, very little blue. And then I'm gonna cut across and get just a little, a little small roll of this color on my knife and I'm gonna come back under this this line we just made. Hey hey Harold, I have a question for you. Yeah, hang on. I gotta be careful doing this. Alright, what is it? What's that? I know you've been uh, very very much explaining to the audience what you're doing. Right? Yeah. So Finish this up, and then for a little bit, let's just you and I chat as artists. Are you up for that? Sounds good to me. Okay, go ahead and finish these steps up. And um, before you start, though, I'll let people know what I've been doing while Harold is working on that mid ground. I took my palette knife and kind of made a highlight of a water that's coming rippling down this way. So I took my knife and just scratched white across. Then, if you guys notice, I was taking the edge of my palette knife and across right by the mountains, every once in a while, I just scritchy scratch some things and trunks and stuff like that in there. So, okay, go ahead and finish your step there, Harold. All right, once I get that little line done, I'm going to come back and give me a little more paint on my knife. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush now, and I'm going to very lightly run across here, very lightly, 
pull these reflections across and just set them right there. Now one thing you can do with this style of painting that I love doing is you can take this paint, turn your brush sideways and come through these trees out here and just give them a little pull and it'll make them look like the water's kind of got a motion to it. And it'll give those trees a little wavy look. Yeah, you get that, that ripple, that paint. natural water line ripple. I want to come up here. I'm going to add just a few. A little distinct. Little ripples out here in the water. Like so. And it don't take many of those to be effective. Like I said, I got trees coming over there anyway, so half that stuff will be seen on that side. Let's make it an art debate. <laughs> uh, Bobby, you getting the same buggy rods in? Both of you guys are dismissed. I'm going to send you out to a theater tonight or something. I have a question for you, Harold. All right, what's that? Are you done with that step? I am. Okay. So let's do this. One thing I, I when I first met you, I wanted to do this live with you. It's because I wanted to get to know you, right? Gotcha. And talk as we paint. Now, because it's been delayed, I've gotten to know you quite a bit. But let's do yeah. this for the audience. Instead of doing our normal instructional, right, we're halfway through the painting. Both you and I will toss in to the crowd how to do it. So what I suggest is every time you're painting a tree, I ask you a couple questions and you answer. And then when I go to paint the same tree, you ask me a few questions and answer. Are you up for that? Okay, let me make sure I understand. <laughs> I know this breaks from our norm, but I will say we have some awesome artists in here and some friends. Why not just get to know each other beyond the canvas, you know? Are you talking about ask you questions about the tree itself? Or are you talking about just no, 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 yeah, I'm so like here, yeah, so essentially, you are about to start to paint a big tree, correct? Uh, two or three of them, actually. Yeah, okay, so as, as you paint two, those, two, I ask three, you questions, yeah. so we'll put our dark in, we'll put our dark layer in, right? As you're painting those trees, I'm going to ask you questions about who you are, um, your artist struggles, things, just random questions, right? And then when you're done with your three, I'll go back and I'll paint my dark paint, you know, ways in, and you ask me a couple questions. Not a beer. You're right. I figure, Harold, let's have fun with this, right? We have friends here. We've got Dream World, who, by the way, amazing artists. Um, and we've got quite a few other people here. We can always do the instructional thing on your time or my time, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, how about the audience? Rod, you want that well, but I know you're on a poo poo list with this guy, so Rob careful what you have. Rob was dismissed earlier. <laughs> yeah, <Rob's> so, <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah, why not? QA, and I'll, I'll try to keep. So, why don't we do this, Harold? I'll start it. Get all, get everything you need to go to start with your first tree, right? Yeah, are you ready? I like the way you just snuck that in on me. <laughs> well, my friend, you don't understand uh, all the people that I go live with uh, when we do this. There's a certain point where I say, you know what? Let's get to know the artist. 
So. Well, that's one thing I learned about you tonight. <laughs> I'm like firecrackers, you know. Once you light the fuse, you're going to get a bang. So. Like I said, I learned one thing tonight already. <laughs> Not to do this again. <laughs> oh, look at everyone, my newfound friend, already telling me he ain't going to go hang with me on TikTok no more. I need new Obviously, friends. This first question is uh, Dream World, can those. you be my friend? But have we ever thought of quitting painting? Absolutely. I've not just painting, art. There is also a backstory of me as an artist that you guys don't know. 100%. I don't know how many times I felt like the mule has kicked me from both sides. For me, but, Bobby, no. I've, I've never considered it. Moni, you got friends. We're your friends. Moni, let's be friends. <laughs> um, but go ahead and start painting your tree with your fan brush and tell us how you do it. And then in between then, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. What I have got here is a number six fan brush. I'm going right through my mountain mix, which is a dark color. Then I'm going through my midnight black, which is a dark color. And then I added south green, which is also a dark color. And I am just loading my fan brush up with dark color. Then I got to come up here and make a decision as to where I want my first evergreen. Okay. Now, this is your world, so wherever you decide you want to put your first evergreen, that's where you should put it. With me, I'm going, hey. right here. I'm going a little under this cloud. Here, wait, oh, Harold. Me. Harold, here comes the point where you're putting in your first pine tree. I don't want you to describe how you do it. I want you to do it while I ask you a question. So paint your tree in. And my question for you, Harold, is what brush took you the longest to master? Well, that's an easy question. I haven't mastered any brushes yet. Very humble. I appreciate so you, that. You, you made that very easy. Okay, let me, let me so rephrase that. What, what is your least favorite brush? My least favorite brush? Yes, sir. Hmm. My least favorite brush. Uh, I mean, think about it. You got filbert fan brush, one inch round, one inch straight, two inch. Um, Script liners. I guess my least favorite would be that real big, oh, the big round. The the yeah, the big daddy. The big one is uh, it's it's kind of intimidating. I will say that one? that does work amazing on uh, like two foot by three foot canvases. Anything smaller, you're it's too much. So I agree with you there. Okay, so you're basically putting in your first pine tree, correct? Yep. And um, this is the apprentice here saying what the master did, but he took a fan brush and kind of put an idea where he wanted it, and then is gently taking the corner of the fan brush and touching the canvas, and then going wider, wider, wider as we go down, correct? Is that another question for me? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm I'm telling you or telling people how you were doing the big pine tree. So. So what do you want me to say? Yeah, you was right, or yeah, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Harold, hey, you're funny. I'm getting off okay. easy here. I'm well, but hold up. By the way, the rules were you did your first pine tree, right? 
No, that wasn't what you said. You Wait. said I was going to build all three of my trees. I was going to put no. in my dark colors. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're trees. right. You're right. Correct. Correct. All right. See, okay. now you're trying to change the rules on me. <laughs> my bad, Harold. I'm glad you're you're on you're on it. Y'all keep an eye on okay. this dude. Y'all keep an eye on him. Help me out here. Hey, Victoria. <laughs> how you doing? Sorry, guys. Yeah. No, I'm just picking on Harold because it, it's been a long time coming for our life, and I do appreciate him taking time out of his schedule, um, as well as wife being on call to help us out. So I'm just picking on my buddy. Locksmith, and you're all part of it. Hey, Locksmith, what's Locksmith up? Just got back from Alaska. I know, I know. Took the dream trip. I'm mad at him, but that's okay. So basically, uh, what happened is Harold and I were going to start the same painting, and he was going to instruct me, but we got a little sidetracked. We still have the same similar painting with mountains and background. And now he's moving on the foreground, but he's going to paint a couple big trees while I ask questions, and then I'll go in onto my painting, I'll paint trees, and he gets to ask me questions, or also audience participation. What did Rod say? I didn't see Rod's question. Ask your question again, Rod. I didn't see it. I didn't see Rod either, Mommy. Well, I mean, I knew he was in here, but I didn't see his question. I know you were in the army. Did you retire? Uh, no, I didn't retire, Rod. I ended up uh, honorably discharged after I did my time. And then I had to be on active, inactive duty, they called it, for uh, a long time. And uh, that's just in case something did go down. Yes, from the army. And uh, they... Uh, which my my inactive duty never was. I never called in for anything because luckily we had no uh, no disasters, you know. So I'm no longer on inactive duty or nothing now. I'm I'm completely turned loose from the government. Me and the government are well. I guess you ever get turned loose from well. Uh, allow me to. Masters, <laughs> hey, allow me to take a second and say, hey, Harold, thank you very much for your service to our country. I appreciate you. And if there are any other uh, people who have served for our country, like much love right here, truthfully. Um, my father was in the Navy. Um, then I've got family members who on the other side um, are military, but they were um, over in Europe, um, but whatnot. Um, not the negative side during the war, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, so you've got how many trees in now? One. One. Because I'm answering Ooh. questions. And Rod and, and other people in here, eyes. I hope you know, like I'm a very, I'm, I'm a very I'm fast a painter. I'm gonna have to check on my wife. I think she's had a stroke. I don't know what that word is. D-A-A-D. What? Yeah. You're more than welcome, Bobby. I appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, wifey, are you okay out there with all this Chinese typing you do? You're very welcome, Melissa. Dad? Dad? Oh, Lord, y'all about it. Right. Oh, it might be me. I might be somebody's dad. You never know. Well, I'm somebody's dad. Rod said, what did I do after the military? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's free. You got to do. Rod, I have been <laughs> a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a mechanic just about my entire life. And I worked on forklifts. And I went to, uh, 
I don't know why I did it, but one day I just got crazy and decided to go out on my own. So I opened my own forklift repair business and I ran it for 15 years. And uh, I was married before uh, before I met Cassie. And my first wife, she and I had a daughter. And uh, she died of breast cancer at a very young age. She died in 2005. And our daughter was 15 at the time. But she's a pretty good girl. And um, I basically had to pretty much raise her from there on. And I didn't, I didn't think, you know, I'd ever meet another woman that would actually put up with me, I guess you could say. But the good Lord knew what I needed. And he smiled down on me. And he sent me another wife that I absolutely adore. And she has been, she has been my rock ever since. And we get along great. Uh, uh, I guess I can say I'm probably one of the most fortunate people I can think of in that respect. Because uh, some men never get the uh, opportunity to have one good woman in their life. And I've had to. So. M M Mr. Ho. Basically what I did. Uh, uh, I they asked you what? Harold. Yeah. I would um, like to thank you for sharing that with us. Because uh, what I was going to ask uh, about uh, while you work on your three trees, I was going to ask questions that you alluded to and, and told us about. Uh, so I really appreciate that conversation, man. Well, if you got another question, feel free to ask. Yeah, I do. I don't mind answering personal questions. You know, that's why I'm, I'm a, I've made it to the age I have with the attitude I got, you know. Because I don't uh, know. I ain't got nothing to hide. I can't hide nothing. Because what I won't tell my wife will. <laughs> so. so I guess uh, my my other question, since you've got several of these trees done, my other question was going to be, what is your least favorite thing to paint? Wait. I Say again. Waves. 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 Okay. Waves. Yep. I hate painting. Me waves. too. Me too. Not that I can't we, do it. I just hate doing it. Not that I can't do it. I have done it. I just don't like it. It's overdone, in my opinion. Yeah, That's just me. But. And like. I've seen amazing artists out there that do that crashing wave or have done several crashing waves and stuff like that. I appreciate seascapes. I just, it's not my style. <laughs> so, all right. All right well, guys, I'm missing a lot of comments tonight. My wife's watching. She'll fill me in later. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to be nice. on getting this little, this little peninsula done right here. So okay. don't think I'm ignoring any of you guys. Uh, you know, on that little personal bit of information I just shared. If y'all commenting on that, thank y'all very much for any comments you got. I, I'm sure it was all nice. And uh, amen to that. So okay, since since here's the deal, why don't you slow down for a second, put your brushes down, right, and as far as my I'm gonna as far as my dark side. I'm done with the dark side over here on this side. All I got to do okay. is the dark side over here now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate some of your same swoop into the front painting. I'm going to chop in three trees, and I'll bring in a foreground. 
I also want to do like a mid range area over here. So, but while I chop in my three trees, you ask me three uh, three questions. At and go. Okay, question number one. How long have you been painting? Um, painting. Well, out of my own wallet, probably about six years. And when I say out of my own wallet is because um, I was an artist in high school, uh, junior high, stuff like that. I was one of the arts. And I also in theater, singing, stuff like that. Um, I will say that I started putting my artwork out there uh, on my YouTube, which I used to be known as Acrylic Mick not oils with Nick, um, because I did acrylic classes. Okay. Um, and so, I, I, you know, I used to be the kid, and my mom would always say, like, when the, the, the Sunday paper came, I wouldn't just read the comics. I would grab a piece of paper and recreate the comics and learn how to draw and create. So I've always been an artist, um, but seriously, how much... Uh, dedication and attention I have put into the world of art in the last oh about 20 18 is when I started posting Instagram YouTube stuff like that and then of course uh, 19, we all know what happened what? what's that what was 19 what oh and no no in 2019 and 2019 is my earliest presence of showing social media, okay. whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. But again, I've just been an artist my whole life, and but I fell in love in the wet and wet style once I. You're supposed to be painting trees, well, by the way. Once I bought a kit, you know, once I bought a kit, a uh, Bob Ross kit. Uh, I've been wet on wet painting for about two, two and a half years now. Two, two and a half. Okay. I think you're already telling us what you decided to do for this. Yep. And, and if you want to. Tell us what's your least favorite thing to paint, Willis? Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Um. um if you want to ask me, you answered all my questions during my questions. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I have a horrible habit of doing that, by the way. I tell you what, um, if anyone, if you can read any questions that the audience has, that'd be fine too. Y'all got While any we're questions for Nick, ladies and gentlemen? If you do, now would be the time to ask. That's right. While he's painting his so, trees. I got my three big old trees plotted in. I'm just touching them up as we talk. Um, but Dream World or my wife didn't Bobby ask or anybody. If, but she said, great job for two years of painting. So. Oh, thank you. But you guys also like two years of oil painting. Just to let you know. I did two years of acrylic. I did two years of watercolor. Two years of like, yeah. Melissa, Melissa asked a good question. She What's said, that? what is your favorite season to paint? Ooh. You know what, Alyssa? That is a very, very good question. Let me think yeah, about that's it. That's what I just said. She asked a good question. Well, that is a um, very good question. I think, for me, oof. I keep using the F, by the way. Don't think I'm going to say the actual word. Um, but I, I want to say fall. Like my gut instinct just tells me fall. Summer's great. Um, but you have a different power and a different color palette when you do like a fall. I mean, I agree. 
Okay, so I got my three dark in. You've got your three dark in, right? Uh, did you say you were going to do something on the other side? I am. Okay, so you're up next oh, yeah. there, batter. What was that? I got my three. I, I didn't By the way, something. while Harold talks, I'm just punching more dark color into my tree. I'm not kind of evening things out. But. All right, Harold, go next. Oh, you go ahead and do what you're doing. No, no, no. You, you've got to do uh, your next three couple of trees so we can ask some more questions. Are you ready for me to do my next one? Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Me too, Rod. That's a pretty sight. That is a very pretty scene. All right. I am going to take me a one inch brush. Just a one inch brush, clean and dry. I'm gonna come over here into my blue. I'm gonna come over into my mountain mix. I'm gonna come over here into my black and my green. Just all my dark colors. And I'm just gonna mix them all together right here on the brush. And I'm just tapping that brush right into the color. While he taps the brush into the color, everybody tap that screen, like, follow, comment, and share. Do what we do. <laughs> like a bad infomercial, I'm in. Da, 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 da. All right, I'm going to come over here right under this cloud. And I'm going to start tapping on the indication of a little tree over here. Just like so. That's all I'm doing. Just trying to make it look like a tree. And I'm going to stop it about right there. Which is about even with my reflection. Come back over, give me a little blue. I'll even pick up a little of the lizard. Oh, come back over here in these same colors. And I'm going to come right here. Sunset, sun in the sky. Yeah. I'm going to turn my brush sideways. By the way, I can show you guys some sunsets, sunrises, and all that in between. But um, let's pay attention. Don't talk amongst yourselves. Not like so. Just kidding, guys. Sorry, Harold. I'm just teasing the audience, by the way. Melissa, who is that question for, actually? Other That's than obvious Bob Ross, what other painters are major influences? Oh, that's a brilliant question. Um, yeah, it's for me or Harold, but I tell you what, while he's filling in, basically, guys, what he's doing is blocking in the color and getting ready to add a shade to do the reflection in the water. Um, like you kind of seen earlier in the live. Um, so number one, I hate to completely be cliche when I say this, but Vincent Mango. However, I will tell you guys that um, I had the fortune of every other summer of my life going back to my mom's and my family's area. Um, and so I'd go to England and I would see Renaissance paintings. I would see people who lab labored over a cathedral. I, I would see like, you know, just stained glass work. Artists of, the, of that period, I, it doesn't matter if it's stained glass or, or stone working or marble or whatever, it's chef's kiss. That's how I feel about it. Um, as far as modern artists, I do understand Banksy, but he hates just like we hate that everybody knows who he is and he hates it. So we got to hate it if you get it. <laughs> um, 
However, I will say personal artists, um, I do know too. One of them is named David Gracie. Uh, he's out of Nebraska. He's a college professor um, and a, a very, very brilliant man. A uh, very great friend of mine. Um, but David Gracie, um, I believe he teaches for, oh, wait, no, I, I'm not going to, my apologies. <laughs> um, but David Gracie, if you look him up on the internet and look his, up, his artwork, like, blows you away. Um, but I will say someone in our style that I admire is Kevin Hill. I, li I like his style. I like what he teaches. And he's very humble about it. So hopefully that answers all your questions. And now, while well, he finishes up the bank and we prep for the next and he's going to ask me a few questions, right, Harold? I'm putting you on point, aren't I, buddy? Well, you, you didn't ask me, though. That well, time. Oh, no, sorry. I was, was, was kind of answering the you question. You didn't ask nothing. So, okay. Oh, I didn't ask anything. I explained. You're right. No, you, didn't, you didn't ask. Okay, Harold, uh, what's your favorite month of the year? November. November. Okay. Yeah. That's the month I was born. Harold, um, when you were growing up, which one would you rather watch? Are you ready? It's going to be a tough choice, bro. Which one would you rather watch? He Man or Transformers? Probably email, All right. You're my friend now. <laughs> but you gotta yeah. imagine I come along during a time that you know, I was nearly grown when he may have come out. <laughs> uh, Man, I had a younger family too. I get you, but we can still watch it because you know your brothers and sisters have to watch them. Yeah, my brother. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do this. Um, one more question, correct? What would you do if you found an Easter egg from last year? Would you tell anyone? And I'm talking the kind of Easter egg with money and candy. If I found an Easter egg from last year? Yeah, that had like money and candy in it. You know, stuff like that. Would I tell anyone? Yeah. Or would you just take the money and eat the chocolate? Well, definitely wouldn't eat the chocolate if it was from last year. <laughs> but yeah, I'd keep the money. Okay. I mean, chances are my wife and I are the ones that put it in there to start with, so. <laughs> there you go. I mean, if your kids knew it was out there, they should look a little over. <laughs> That's the answer I was looking for, Harold. Very good. You passed. You passed. So, all right. I'm going to chop in a tree, and you ask me a couple questions. Did you Go. eat old Easter egg? Say again? There's the first question. Would you eat the old chocolate? I mean, depends on where we found it. Outdoors? No. In in inside? Maybe. Be a little surprised. <laughs> I'm joking. I would not eat a year old chocolate now. But I'll definitely get that money back or, you know, whatever. Little prizes. Okay. So, <laughs> I know, Harold, we're making this fun for the heck of it. Um, One thing I'll say is pretty much after this, I am ready for highlight, so. Yeah, me too, pretty much. Okay. 
I'm just going to punch in a couple background trees and you move on to the next stage and I'll catch up. Would any of you guys out there that's watching this tonight, would y'all eat the it's a good question, isn't it? Would you? Thank you. That's that's what I'm saying, Mom. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> Well, you know, we got to ask. Some people might be like, yo, you know. Okay, well, a little extra know, chocolate I'm going to hurt me. You know, for oh, UPS and he would. Yeah, see? I mean, you never know. If it, I'm telling you, if it was outdoors, no. But if it was, like, hidden indoors and you just found it in a drawer or something stupid, you're like, eh, well, I, I made a dollar thirty-five in a Percy's uh, miniature. You know, you can't complain. <laughs> oh my you Melissa. No. <laughs> See Harold, I told you I like to have fun with my lives, you know. We're painting together, but I wish you sure you would not see it. <laughs> oh my god. I'm putting you on the spot tonight, Harold. I'm I'm just oh, messing I'm with you. Laughing at these answers I'm seeing up here. Yeah. Okay, well, I've got my trees put in. Did you ask me my questions? No, no, they sure didn't. It? Well, the thing about it is I'm a, I'm 100% clear. I've told my people many, many times if they have personal questions, just ask away. And if it gets too personal, I will not answer. But if it's a question, I don't mind knowing who I am. Right. Because we're yeah, all like friends I don't and family in here. And uh, that's kind of what I want to develop. Yeah, I may want a 100,000 followers, but I'd rather have dedicated friends and followers than I had a thousand that just you know just watch for the heck of it so welcome to and and what i want to explain to you those artists who are in the room and friends friends of ours i want to explain to you this great debacle I had. And actually uh, while harold while you uh, go ahead and do your highlights i'll talk about this for a second one thing I found with TikTok is you always have to chase that dragon. If you guys know what I mean, you have to post, you have to do videos, you have to, you have to, you have to, you want to keep in the algorithm. One thing I found, because I had to take several breaks, uh, if you guys see, I have like 30 odd thousand K, right? I had a huge start and I was doing great and awesome, but I had to take a couple of personal breaks. One, I broke my kneecap. That took me out of the game for a couple months. I couldn't stand. I was on bed rest. Then when I moved from Nebraska to Arizona, I had to take a break. Want to know the hardest thing about TikTok is regaining your audience. So when you do not post for a while and people like you come into the room, um, that's amazing. That's when you know you have an audience. You know what I mean? When... To heck with the algorithm. You take a bit of a break and you come back and your friends are like, hey, let's kick it. Let's watch you paint. So that's my little spiel on that. But yes. That I'm developing on TikTok. They are so supportive. When yeah, I nice. Some about my YouTube page. Uh, I was in the 700s, and thanks to my friends over here on TikTok, I think I'm at 800 847. I think it was today, and I got 153 to go before I hit that 1,000. But I do know that if it's going to happen, it'll probably happen for my friends here on TikTok. 
Oh yeah, the people here are so amazing. There, you know, I love the people. All, all the ones that I got on YouTube are, are my friends already. They already subscribed, so. And I, I've built a, I've built quite a following over there. <clears throat> Thank you, Ma. Is that Mallybug? Thank you very much. Locksmith, I am totally lost as to what you're talking about, but I think you got a conversation going with somebody else. <laughs> if you do, that is absolutely awesome. I like it when y'all talk amongst yourselves like it. Yeah, they're awesome group pers. They really are. Being loyal friends. Okay. So, I will tell you this, Harold. You know what I enjoy about tonight? Is your adaptability. Okay. Your adaptability. We had a plan, it all went to hell. I put you on the spotlight and we're still paying. So we're, we're doing good here, bud. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So Perfect. let me know when you're ready to explain highlights on trees. I'm, I'm still waiting for you on that. I'm doing highlights now. Well, why aren't you telling us? Telling you what? Just kidding. I'm telling you everything I can about about myself and what I'm doing and all that good stuff. I know. I'm I'm just joking with you, man. Hey y'all, I'm putting highlights on tree. <laughs> there you go. See, now our studio audience at home knows what we're doing. How did you put those highlights on? We're just saying, bro. And what color? Oh, what is that, light green? Y'all don't know because my camera's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm taking yeah, a little light green. Light green. green and a little cad yellow. That's all it is. Gotcha. That's what's on these, uh, on these evergreens. And I got to do this color down here. <clears throat> how do y'all keep seeing how many likes we got? Um, it's upper upper corner. We're looking at what thirty three K. Amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Great job. What does that say before up here mean? I got a 74. No, that's on top of your screen. There's a 74 up there. Um, I'm not sure I'm seeing what you're seeing, but up top, I, I see the left-hand side that we got like 53, or no, excuse me, 33K likes. We've got 17 followers. we got a few people here. I've got 74 tips. You're the host, so I don't get to see your tips. I see your painting. And then I see down below that said, both of you are beautiful guys. What, what do you so, mean? Tips? Uh, someone tipped or gift, gifted me. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Vicky. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, good question. What I do if I'm working with water that's in motion is I normally try to take the colors that's surrounding the water and just kind of work them in with my fan brush up close to the bank to where it just looks like some of the some of the colors just mixing in right there. I don't put a, a ton of effort into reflections and still and moving water, but I will add just a little bit of the color that's surrounding it. So 
Try that. That might work out for you. Yeah, Vicky, they are. They they over here talking again tonight. All right, I got some white, and I'm going straight into my Indian yellow, and I'm mixing these colors together right here on my fan brush. It's just titanium white and cad yellow, and I'm up here to drop the sap green and bring into that color. Exactly, Laura. I'm doing the same, basically, with my colors. All right. Then I'll come up here under my trees. And I'm going to just we'll start with this fan brush. And I want to use kind of like the corner of it, because if you try to use it, Flat, it's going to give you smiley faces, and you don't want to get them, pick up too many of them smiley faces doing this. And then the more you do this color, tapping into this dark, you're going to go to picking up a little of the dark color. And when you do, don't, don't let that worry you, because that's kind of what you want to happen. back under the trees up here again. I'm just going to keep tapping this color on. And I just want to leave some dark. And if you go running out of paint on that one corner, swap over to the other. And just, all I'm doing is bending the bristles up. I just want this to look like some Some old rough looking grass over here. What's up, Skeets? Hello, hello. Welcome, Skeets. Skeets. <laughs> skeets, Skeets. All right, then I'm going to come up here and get me a little more of my sap green. And bring it down into and cut. Just a little more green this time. Come back up here and just touch in a couple areas with the green. Not everywhere, just a couple areas. And what that'll do is it'll create an illusion for your eye. And it will it'll add in those dark spots that you need. And it'll just it'll make it look like you've got a grassy area over here and that's just by adding a little bit of green that's all that did just by adding a very little bit of green but still leave you some black in there too Y'all seen me do the little path before, so if y'all want to put a path in there, just come up here and scratch you out some of the paint with your with your knife. Put you some brown in there with a little highlight color on it, and you can put a little path right down to the to the bank over here. Like if you walk in the path that way, you disappear back in the trees in here. So Harold, yeah. How do you how do you think we've done tonight? Oh, I think it's been good. I think people enjoyed it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna grab a little oval brush now. Like y'all didn't know that wasn't gonna happen before the night was over. Not brush. I will show you guys a cool little trick with the fan brush. If you take the corner and pop it on the edge of vegetation, it gives that idea of like weeds and reeds and grass that extends out. So again, if I show you here, I'm just popping 
the edge right up to the shoreline and it gives grass. But just as FYI, if you guys want to use that in your painting, feel free. What's up, Spider? Thank you, man. All right, now we'll come over here and start. I like my little leafy tree over here. And y'all already know this is a very light touch. Very light. And y'all already know that I'm going to say leave some dark. Don't kill all your dark. You got to have them dark colors. Got to have the dark colors. The happy leafy tree. That's right, Melissa. <laughs> and make sure when you come up here to do this that your brush is open. Don't bring a clawed butt brush up here. That's right, Bobby. Don't murder all the door. You got to have that door. You know how dark you'll never shut a light. Amen to that. About like that. And you got you in a nice little second. Nice little leafy green tree. Don't be a murderer. <laughs> Nick Well, he said heck no. Just a second. All right. Come on. Nick's trying to come back. There we are. <laughs> there he is. He back. I thought I would uh, kind of show you guys a little bit of my painting. Also take a step back. That's one important thing. I needed to. And the sap green and the. Indian yellow for my highlights over here on this side now, my bushes. And we'll come in here, just like so. There we go. And I'm just using the same color right here, but I'm going to use it in a way to where I use the black as a separator. And we'll bring some of the bushes down on my little bank over here. But if I use this color and I use the corner of this brush, I can get away with using and not have to uh, use another color because I'm going to use the black as my separator. I'll leave them dark colors in there. You don't have to change tones. That's right. All, sometimes all we have to do is just uh, change tones from dark to light. That really can make or break a painting, honestly. Then I'm going to come yeah. down here. Then I'm going to add these colors right into the water. And you don't have to be perfect on this step. It's just put some color down here. Thank you so much. This will, sell, this will sell the illusion. If you just got these colors down here, you don't even have to work hard at this. Just touch some color in. And your eye will do the rest for you down there. Then you want to take your clean, dry brush and come up here, and I mean barely, barely touch that color. Very, very, very lightly. And just bring those colors down. Mm. And then very lightly brush across. And 
And just like that, you've got instant reflections. And then unless you just want to go back and add some some birds in the sky or um, I let these trees dark by the way. I don't think they need highlights on them. They further back. Back across the lake. There you go. I kind of did the same with mine. You got to keep certain dark and certain light. I see one thing I wish I had to do. I wish I would fix the top of that mountain. I guess I can do that right now. I'm just going to get all this crazy color that's got my. Just get my there we go. White. Get just a little bit of white. I'm going to come back here. There we go. Yeah. So, I think we'll the right down the side right here. Oh, thank you. Hey, Angela, how are you doing? By the way, uh, Angela, so Harold is doing a 16 by 20, and I'm doing an 11 by 14. Um, we started the live together kind of showing we we're mutually going to kind of paint the same painting, but obviously we both got distracted and had fun. Um, but uh, Angela, she does Bob Ross uh, very, very small. This is 11 by 14. I believe she does very, like, inches by inches uh, painting. I saw, so, your, uh, I saw your season three today. It looked good. Yeah. So if anyone in the room hasn't followed her, please, by all means, check her out. Check her stuff out. She does great, great small paintings. <laughs> but yeah, Harold She's and I just, uh, off seasons. we thought I we'd paint the night together. All, and, Angela, all 13, I mean, all of them. Ain't you going to try to do all the seasons? Yes, I, that's what I understand. But yeah, any other artists in here? You know, Bobby, I, I I don't I I don't think I have. Oh my God, that's a good question. Oh wow. Hmm. Thank you, Lock Smith. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Locksmith. And I, I wish my lighting wasn't that's so true, horrible. Right? I could really. Locksmith. I mean, uh, that's true. Both Harold and I uh, struggle with lighting at the moment. But. Oh, sorry. My yeah, apologies. I, you, would, you would be right, brother. The seascape. I hadn't thought about that. But I have the uh, clouds, just like Harold. Mountains, just like Harold. I've got some background. And then I did a little more foreground where it's on his, he did about the same size foreground, just the opposite side. And then uh, we both went three little trees. <laughs> and then he, on this side, he chose for that big oak tree or that, what do you call it? The shade tree or the plumage tree or whatever. And I went the other way with more pine trees and a bank. But yeah, it's a beautiful painting. Good night, Locksmith. Yeah, I'll do my uh, I'll do my close up tonight, Rod. And uh, you know my little video that I always post. Well, thank you, Lord. I'll do all that tonight. Yeah, and I'll, I'll do uh, one right? also, Harold, and I'll I'll tag you in it. So, well, thank you, Purse. I appreciate you being here. Is that the point where you want to sign on your painting? 
Yeah, I can. Okay. I don't think I'm going to put no birds in this one. I don't see the sense in it. So I believe you're usually you're the, the type once you paint it, you're done, right? Once I put my mark on it, that's it. Yep. I have I can't go back and change nothing. Okay. Me, I tend to fiddle, but for the most part, when my painting is done, uh the either the night of that I do it or the next day it's pretty much finished. I might just come in and do touch-ups like I'm doing now. But other than that, I think I'm pretty pretty well done with this painting. Harold? Yep. I think so. Well, there we go. So how many brushes do you have to clean up? Tonight? Yep. Six. Six? Yep. I've got seven. Wow. All right. We kept within range. <laughs> I used an extra fan brush, so. <laughs> oh. I hear you, Rod. I thought I kicked you out earlier, Rod. <laughs> yeah, I was curious how, I mean, Rod, he never committed to being my friend. Never committed to uh, being my friend, so I'm not sure about him now. Actually, I thought I kicked you and Bobby out. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> he said he was hoping somebody would send a dinosaur to where we both had. I to know. Go. You know, it's kind Honestly. of funny. Nobody did send one tonight. No. I I will tell you right now. I, I I'm not lying. If if a dinosaur gets sent. You will hear me roar and and alive. So, you know, it's only fair. I ask you to do it, and uh, you do it. So, if someone sends a, di a tiny dino right now, I will roar. I don't think nobody's gonna send one. I hope they don't. Oh no. I get I know you do, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I will say, every time anyone roars when they get a tiny dino, I also get tickled. So, because it's, it's the initiation. It's part of the thing. But. Well, well, I apologize I to you guys that I had my colors off again tonight. And, well, I apologize that I was late. <laughs> I don't count, Bobby. That's the wrong dinosaur. Good try. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, he's going to set up the dinosaur. Well, I tell you, y'all been a crowd tonight. I've enjoyed y'all this night. Well, yeah, they've been fun, and Harold, you've been fun, and you know, I I apologize if I threw you a curveball. I never tell that to people that I'm painting with. Like, hey, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ask you questions, or you know, I'm gonna make it a little bit different. But I I feel that helps with guest interaction, people getting to know you, stuff like that. So. I will say you. I put you on the spot, but you did well tonight, bud. Oh, they know me. They know I'll open up. Yeah. You get thirty-seven thousand. Oh wow. Well, thank you guys. I actually didn't do it, but let's see y'all did it. Thank y'all. 
Yeah. Freaked out so much. We did it quite well. Honestly, quite, quite well. I thank y'all so much. Y'all the ones that did it. Y'all were the ones punching the screen. That's right. So thank you. I think they were tapping every time we were uh, making pine trees and tapping our fan brush, you know. That's what I think was happening. Apparently they was. They took us to 37,000. That's amazing. So yeah, how do you feel about tonight's live? Is that what you ask in the audience or me? You. Oh, like I just said, I, I think we did good. I mm -hmm. really enjoyed it. Okay. Now, do you sometimes understand how it's hard for two instructors to teach at the same time? For two instructors? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why sometimes tonight I just let you talk and do your thing, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to curveball them for a little bit. <laughs> and I don't know. My goal was just to have fun with you and paint, you know? Well, that's what makes it fun. Yep. Break up the norm. A weekend live would make it better, Rod. Ooh. Maybe, Rod. More people. Okay. I can't disagree with his uh, choice there at all. But well, I don't think it'd be a real bad idea to have uh, have different painters on. You know, like the uh, like no, not at all. Somebody else another night. No, we don't need to worry about no dinos. See, there you go. That's <laughs> You We're good on the dinos. You yeah, might have to bang your hand, Rod. But yeah, I also have some wet on wet artists that uh, we could almost all get together and do like a battle, you know? Like a one hour, we've all got one hour to paint and we do one theme and then the audience decides who wins or, you know, whatever. Uh, to me, that seems like it kind of puts the audience in a bad way. I, I, um, really, I mean, that's, you know, making the audience choose over you or somebody else. That's kind of, I don't know. To me, it just don't seem fair. No, I do get you. I understand where you're coming from. Maybe just the artist jam then. Where we all just get together and paint for an hour. Yeah, that's like tonight. I wouldn't want the audience to have to choose between my paint and your paint. I, you know, we both sit here and paint it, and I, I wouldn't feel right about it. Yeah, very true. I understand. Everybody that. just commented tonight said, uh, said they both were beautiful, and I'm happy with that. Yeah. Oh, well, the wife is still here. I thought she was young. Oh, oh my God! She, yeah, don't 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 talk about you know bad about her now. She's still in the room. <laughs> now, God bless her. I know she puts up with you, so she's doing all right. Yeah. Yep. Well, I put up with her too, so don't think it's one way street. <laughs> well. My apologies. I always like to tie it with the ladies because I know how difficult us men can be. She'll take you. <laughs> but. <laughs> Rod, look, Rod gonna say now nah, her. Well, he, he caves quick. <laughs> Just throw me under the but. bus again. Now nah, her. Y'all well, gonna, gonna have to start wearing your, your, your man clothes up in here now. I will say, say before to be on the man side, there's enough women to support the women. But let's not get into the lover's quarrel now. Well this already done told her about some duct tape earlier. Now she gonna come up in there and tell me to shut up. Up in my life. Tell me to shut up. I'm just a fan you. Well, 
Now she got Angela laughing. See what I mean? Women's I tell sport. You, I, I tell you what. Um, I again, I don't want to deal with the lovers' quarrel right now. So. out of the brush uh, upstairs later <laughs> but uh mr harold i will say it has been a pleasure to paint with you tonight um oh, I, enjoyed it, I really did yeah i know we got a little south and we went a little crazy we went off plot but we had fun you know, the yeah both you and i like i said uh we promised each other we'd paint together and i'm glad we finally got to do it yeah, me too, me too. I'm kind of one of those man of my words, so when I say something, I hate when life gets in the way, and now finally we're able to do it. And uh, essentially, although different, we did the same similar painting. You know, there's sky, mountains, lake, and pine trees. What's here? You know, Bobby? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Dream World, Angela, I appreciate you guys, Casey, Rob, thank you so much for your guys' support. Good night, um, thank you. Good night, buddy. Yeah, good night, buddy. Rod, you make sure you wear your big boy britches when you come back. <laughs> well, Rod, you can join my live with your little girl britches on. That's okay. What is going on? I ain't going to hate on it. I ain't going to hate. <laughs> you can wear a little girl over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh they always roll, buddy. I try. But I will say, Harold, I need to hop offline. My phone is about 35% now and dropping dramatically. Um, But again, I appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, Look what came of it. I know it kind of flew a little bit off awry, off script of our normal instructing, but it's fun, you know? So. Yep. All right, sir. Well, on that note, either A, I can eject myself out, or you can, uh, we can wrap up the yeah, live by good saying night. good night. Okay. Well, here, here's the thing. Before I go, I will say thank you very much to the people who stayed through and, and true to us. And I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for the likes, support, the shares, the comments. Uh, thank you for viewing our content. And by the way, Painting with Harold, check him out. And uh, if you haven't followed me, feel free and follow again. So... I am going to go ahead and eject myself out, Mr. Harold. Go ahead and show that painting off before you get done with your live. Give it a give everyone a nice zoom close up, okay? Oh, I will. Thank All right. You. Well, sir. Before I close off every night. All right. Well, I'm going to do that to mine, although I have a shadow, so it's kind of hard. The lighting in my apartment, ugh, so horrible. But you know, man, thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Yeah. All right, and we'll catch up soon, mate. All right, see you, Mick. Enjoy it. Thank all you guys for being here with us tonight. Uh, we had fun. I enjoyed tonight. Something a little different. Paint with Mick was fun, and, and you guys were supportive and Mick's got that you know he's got his TikTok he said Instagram and YouTube but oils were mixed so I know we're not on viewers but like and share his stuff you know that's sharing his stuff what what helps get us out here oh something not big time right there I don't know what about my screen got big then went back low I don't know how it out. All right, we're going to try to do my close up before I leave. And 
Hope I don't make y'all too drunk by doing this. All right, here we go. See if maybe we can get the true color showing here. If not, I'll have them. I'll have them tonight. I don't think it's going to pick up the true colors. Right. And with that said, I'll tell you, everybody, I love you guys. God loves you more. Y'all have a blessed night. And thank y'all very much. I hope y'all enjoyed the uh, side by side painting. I know I had fun. I think Mick had fun. So, with that being said, I'll tell you guys good night, and I will catch you all later. Hopefully tomorrow, tonight, right here on Painting with Harold.